and thanks for the invitation. Also great to see so many faces that I haven't seen in a while, especially not in a face-to-face -face manner. Right, um, yeah, the project is indeed still fresh and still young, uh, but the more you know, the sooner it will be over. It's a, it's a short project, one and a half years, and I will talk about it in the next 10, 15 minutes. So uh, the project is called European Language Equality. Um, and it has a very, very clear objective. And the objective is to develop a strategic research, innovation, and deployment agenda to achieve digital language equality in Europe by 2030. Easy. So let's unpack this. Um, we are developing a strategic agenda uh, that is a strategic plan with recommendations and topics and priority topics and timelines um, that we suggest to the European Union. Um, with regard to our core topics, right? So, um, and there is a time frame attached to this agenda. It's 2030. So, um, and the idea is um, so the, the, the target of this whole endeavor is to achieve digital language equality. Andreas mentioned this at the beginning in his introduction that many languages are under supported technologically. Um, We've done the research as MetaNet in 2010, 2011, published the results in the form of the MetaNet white papers. Unfortunately, back then we found out, I don't have the slides now with me today in this presentation, but back then we found that 21 European languages are in danger of digital extinction. Yeah, And this is still the case, despite the uh, great breakthroughs and advancements of deep learning. Um, but this imbalance, the stark imbalance is still in place, unfortunately. This is what we want to change. And I could even stop here right now, but I will also tell you the details in the next couple of slides. So the consortium um, has uh, 52 partners from all over Europe. I will show them to you in a minute. Uh, this is a huge number, which also puts a lot of admin burden on our friends in Dublin, who are the coordinators. Andy, Andy Way is in the meeting today, I think. Uh, some other colleagues from the project are also in the meeting um, and maybe they can help with the question answer period later on. So 52 partners are, are uh, a challenge <laughs> to, to, uh, to keep under control and to make happy uh, and the, the team in Dublin is doing a great job at this. Uh, and BFKI is the co-coordinator of this project. It's an 18 month, uh, let's say speedboat project. We want to do many different things in this one and a half years of which one third is almost over already. It's, uh, the clock is ticking. ELE and ELG, European Language Grid, which uh, some of you may be aware of, um, will both end in June 2022. And we will hopefully have uh, a joint conference then, hopefully saying with COVID in mind that we can all meet up face to face again in June 2022 in Brussels to hopefully celebrate um, a great success uh, or two great successes coming out of these two projects. So the origin just very, very briefly um, and the evolution of this project is uh, mostly rooted in this document here, the language equality in the digital age resolution, which was, uh, which was prepared by two committees in the European parliament um, also based on the STOA study, uh, the Human Language Project study. And this uh, resolution here went through the parliament in September 2018 uh, with a landslide vote of 592 people in favor, members of the parliament in favor of this uh, rather slim document, 10 pages, but 45 recommendations. And one of them is on the screen here, the three actually. Um, the most important one for our project is the recommendation that the EU should establish a large scale long term coordinated funding program for research development and innovation in the field of language technologies at European, national and regional levels tailored specifically to Europe's needs and demands, um, which is what we are trying to do as ELE. We're not trying to do that as ELE as such, but we are trying to develop a plan how to do this yeah, in the time frame until 2030. The consortium, um, as I mentioned, we have uh, five core partners, DCU, the ADAPT Center in Dublin, uh, so Dublin City University, DFKI, Charles University in the Czech Republic, ILSP uh, in Athens, Greece, and the University of the Basque Country. We have on board and we structure them, um, as you can see them on the slide, 
nine networks associations initiatives, LT Innovate is one of them, um, FNIL, ELAN, ECSPM, Claren, Claire, NEM, Libre, and Wikimedia. If you want to know more details, let's talk about them in the QA period. We have nine companies that develop language technologies of all sorts and flavors, Tilde, Elder Expert Systems, Say Labs, Kantan MT, Pangeonic, Semantic Web Company, Onto Text, and SAP. So we cover machine translation, text analytics, we cover um, knowledge and data and ontologies and then SAP as a large scale European enterprise in this field. And then I'm not reading out the uh, 29 research organizations here. Um, many of them are also national competence centers in ELG and many of them are wearing also a third head as Clarin participants, um, as you all know. So, and together with this consortium, we are trying to get this project off the ground. So as I mentioned, the main result of this project will be the strategic agenda and roadmap. And the project itself is strategically geared also towards this main piece of outcome here, or of output. So this will be what we call a, de a detailed description of the European language equality program. Yeah, in contrast to the project, here we define the European Language Equality Program as a 10-year research program. It's a working title, maybe it will change, maybe it will stay the same, we have to see. Um, so what is happening in the project itself, research partners, as you just saw them on the slide uh, previously, they prepare updates of the MetaNet white papers that will be one deliverable each. We are not doing a full update of the 70, 80, 90 pages. Uh, but a targeted, mostly empirical update by collecting language resources and language technologies and services and data sets and tools and so on. This is happening as we speak. Um, the networks and initiatives, uh, Clarion is one of them, um, are on board to produce reports that will also be one deliverable each in which they collect and consolidate and present their own position and needs and wishes and demands and visions with regard to this wider topic of digital language equality. What can they bring to the table? What kind of issues do they need uh, or see? What kind of gaps do they perceive? How can these gaps be filled with things that they have? And Stephen previously also mentioned many things that uh, will be very, very valuable here. The companies um, that you saw on the previous slide, they will produce technical deep dives from their own perspectives uh, in tandem with other companies, also with external stakeholders, to take a deep, deep look at these different technology areas like MT, like speech, and like data to um, do the drill down so that we get a more detailed picture of what we need to tackle in the next 10 years until 2030. There will be additional reports uh, produced by the core partners and by others. This will all be done in a more or less autonomous way. So um, and you, I have the, the list of deliverables in a minute. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope we get everything done in time. Total number of languages taken into account in ELE is approximately 75. Um, so we need a list and we will publish a list very soon on the website. It's still uh, in progress. It's somewhere between 70 and 75. So the work packages, um, just very briefly, so that you can get, uh, also that you can familiarize yourself with the structure of the project. Top left, um, first work package is looking at the current state of play. What's the current status quo in 2020, 2021? with regard to European language equality. Here we are also defining what that means, what is digital language equality. The next work package is two, looking at the future situation. What do we want to have? What kind of situation do we want to have in 2030? Um, with everything I mentioned before, processed in a systematic way with the right visions and instruments and tools and gaps that we need to fill and so on. Work package three takes care of the assembling of all the different bits and pieces into a coherent strategic agenda and roadmap. Uh, work package four is taking care of communication and dissemination and sustainability. And work package five is doing the project management. Here you can see the fine print, now unpacking also the task structures and the main deliverables. 
Um, I included some errors here for some of the Clarin related work. Um, that's primarily in task 2.1, top, top right corner there, the perspective of European LT developers, industry and research. So we, we, we structure our work into European LT developers and LT users and consumers, on the other hand, and developers are in people including industry, research, NLP, linguistics, computational linguistics. So Clarin is clearly among, among this umbrella here. Um, so and Clarin will produce, that's the left arrow uh, report from their own perspective um, based on a survey that is being finalized right now and will be made available. We had a couple of meetings already um, very, very soon. And yeah, the main, the main piece of outcome or the other main piece of outcome that will come out of this, uh, apart from the different reports and deep dives, will be a forecast. What will language technology look like in 2030? The field is so incredibly dynamic right now with um, large language models doing interesting, uh, amazing things. Um, I just saw a paper from Google um, where they looked not at tokens, but at, at bytes. Yeah, so they are now encoding bytes instead of tokens. Um, and they can, they can perform amazing things also in a multilingual way. I haven't read the paper, I didn't have the time yet, but that all sounded like, a, like another potential breakthrough. And what, now we need to extrapolate this to 2030. What will the situation be like then in research? Uh, and how, that's the main question, how can we make use of it? to address the multilingual setup that we have in Europe with all languages and I level, all languages of equal importance. And we need to take care of equal language technology support for all languages. Um, so right now we are, yes, last day in month five. Tomorrow it will be the start of month six. Um, then one third of the project will be already over. Um, and as you can see, there's not much going on in the, at the beginning. Uh, we set up the project, the website, and some, some uh, important things that we needed to get ready. Uh, and now we will sooner or later start with the actual work phase, yeah, which will last from June until, yeah, let's say August, September, October. That will be the heavy lifting that we have to do. Uh, and then everything needs to be written up, consolidated, um, delivered to the European Commission, yes, but also first and foremost uh, delivered into or put into a strategic research agenda and roadmap. That's the main primary thing here. Um, there are some other secondary things that we also need to do. That's especially the groundwork in the different countries, talking to politicians, talking to the national contact points, who will then talk to the European Commission with the heads of the countries um, that we also need to do, um, which is also very crucial. And then in June next year, hopefully we can deliver the final ELE book and strategic agenda to, um, yeah, my hope is still that we can deliver it to Frau von der Leyen, but maybe to Thierry Breton or one or two commissioners, maybe Maria Gabriel, um, to, so that we can suggest a really strong case here to the European Commission. Um, I don't want to overstretch my time. Um, the uh, networks are listed here again on this slide. As you can see, we have many, many deliverables in the project. And this is the Clarin deliverable, the 2.3, which is technically due in February next year. Maybe it will be ready a bit earlier. So as a summary, um, ELE is a new European project that started in January and ends in June 2022. The goal is, again, the development of a strategic research, innovation, and implementation agenda and roadmap for achieving full digital language equality in Europe by 2030. This is a once in a decade opportunity, and I'm very happy that all important networks and communities and companies agreed to be on board in this project. This is a great opportunity. So we cover the whole field, which is great. We also need to do some outreach to, to get especially the consumer side in. Um, that will be challenging, but it's doable. There will be a close collaboration, of course, with European Language Grid, which we make use of also for a couple of technical things. It's a good coincidence that we have two projects here. Um, there is an overlap also in between uh, ELE and ELG with regard to the consortium. 
And our goal is to firmly establish language technology and language centric AI in Horizon Europe and in Digital Europe program. Um, Claren doesn't need to be convinced anymore. So this, this plea to participate is maybe preaching to the choir, but nevertheless, please participate in the stakeholder events in the surveys and the questionnaires. And I hope um, that we can see each other again. Uh, in person in June 2022 at Meta Forum in Brussels. Thanks very much. We have a website. Check it out. Um, and many thanks for, again for the uh, to Andreas for the invitation, and many thanks especially to the two consortia and the project teams. Thanks very much. And thank you very much, uh, Georg, for this uh, presentation of this impressive project and. Uh, uh, there are probably some questions I would like to uh, use the time uh, or the opportunity to ask these questions or to allow these questions. In the meantime, I would like to mention two uh, two issues. Um, so you mentioned these white paper um, uh, series, uh, a very impressive white paper series on different languages, on the situation language technology, and um, you are going to update this. Uh, maybe you could also uh, briefly mention where it has been published and uh, that it's open access or so, that, uh, because it's probably quite interesting for, for our audience. And then we have also the question from, from John. Um, sure, let me just put in the link into the chat. Anyway, anyway uh, already uh, uh, I'll answer to qu uh, the question from uh, uh, from John. Uh, Luxembourgish is included in these uh, 75. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Luxembourgish is, of course, included. Yeah. Moin. Um, anyway, that was just an example. How do you decide what to include? You know, that list can be extended a lot, as you both know. Maybe yeah. and can also uh, can also be. Uh, yeah, yeah, we we um, we first of all the, the, the yeah the obvious target um, John the twenty four official EU languages yeah yeah then then we have the languages that we uh, had a look at as MetaNet like Basque Catalan um, and Galician and and various others that are very widely spoken with millions and millions of speakers, but no official status in the EU, which is insane. Um, when you look at the numbers of some official EU languages, then, <laughs> then it's really insane, but it's, it's, it is what it is. Talking, so we filled, in, we filled in these, we filled in these languages. Um, and then, and then we had, um, we had a sit down with our colleagues in European Language Equality Network in European Civil Society Platform for Multilingualism and some other networks um, to bring in other languages. Yeah, so they also nominated languages, and then we compiled them. Um, and um, in the end, we had a list of about 70, 75 languages. Okay, More, a lot, a lot by demand then. Basically. Yes, awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Andreas, you mentioned the MetaNet white papers. Uh, we did this with a group of about 235 colleagues from all over Europe. Uh, many of you participated in this exercise back then. Um, I see Bente, she participated. Um, and that exercise resulted in 31, uh, we call them MetaNet white papers in total. 10 kilos, the whole box, 3,000 and change pages, um, published at Springer in 2012, um, and also open access available at the website that I put into the chat. Yeah, and the main, the main outcome, it's hard to compress the results of so much work and, and 3,000 pages of text into one sentence, but the, the main result was 21 European languages in danger of digital extinction. And that did, did a lot of door opening in the European Parliament and the Commission and that was super helpful. Yeah. And it's so, still it's still it's still relevant 10 years later. It's still relevant. And it's probably uh, going to be relevant. And I also liked uh, your su sustainability plan that was uh, uh, included in this project. So the aim of the project, well, well one of the results of this project could be a much larger project as I if I if I understand this this correctly. Correct. Yeah. yeah, 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 and we are even even more ambitious not to call it a project but a program. Yeah, great. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Andy uh, Way. Uh, 
um, mentioned in the chat that no, oh, okay. <coughs> um, uh, that um, yes, Andy is Andy is Andy is right, of course. Yes, uh, thanks, Andy, for pointing this out. No language is ruled out. That's that's clear. Um, so we do have some unofficial partners who want to look at some languages, maybe not to the full extent that we will do this um, in the in the actual project, but. Um, there, there will be some additional work going on on their own dime, essentially. So if anybody wants to do work on additional languages, um, and as I said, the, the list of languages will be made available in about a week or two weeks or so, then please feel free. Short question. Uh, the project looks at languages in terms of location, EU, not the, pro <clears throat> not the project of the people. I mean, is there a rank of highly spoken languages in Europe, which is not EU languages, uh, um, being as a first or a second or a third language? This is one of the issues that uh, probably arises quite often. So what about immigrant languages, essentially? Yeah, they're not in scope. Um, some of them, some of them, and I would have to check the list again. Maybe um, historically, some of the languages can be, to a certain extent, considered immigrant languages uh, that we have. But but we we are not looking at the let's say at the salient, prominent immigrant languages that we that we have in Europe currently. Yeah. Okay, they are not in yeah. scope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much, Georg. Thank you.